Hello everybody and welcome to the 20 things I wish I knew before I got many many hours into Wild Hearts. I will not be showing any gameplay from Kimono that hasn't been seen in trailers nor will I be showing areas that haven't been seen. So you can watch this before heading out on your journey without worrying about a big spoiler popping up on your screen. You are safe. <laughs> so first, let's start with petting animals. You can pet just about everything in this game. And when I first found this out, I thought, oh yay, I can pet all the cute animals and not have to kill them, let's go. And I was very wrong. <laughs> Petting a smaller kimono and slaying them give different materials. So if you want to have all of the materials, you're going to have to do both. Plus some of the best food that you can eat to gain the best stats comes from slaying the small kimono. So that cute bunny that you just pet that looked so happy to have your affection, you're going to have to kill a few of them. Sorry. <laughs> Speaking of pets, you can actually keep pets in Wild Hearts. There's a dragon katakuri. Uh, those are the things that you build outside of combat, like things to traverse, stuff in your camp, etc. That allows you to keep the smallest kimono as a pet and collect materials from them that you exclusively get from keeping them as pets. So make sure that you run around picking up absolutely everything because you will need it later. This doesn't just apply to the small kimono. In general, I recommend picking up absolutely everything all the time. You will need ingredients to eat to boost your stats before hunts, pets to gain materials from, various materials to craft armor, weapons, ornaments, and materials to leaven up your dragon pits. So grab everything all the time. Don't skip over anything. Moving on to another kind of pet, but more like a companion, I guess you could say. Let's talk about Tsukumo. These are little ball fellas that you can find around all of the locations in Wild Hearts. Once you find your first one, you'll be able to take them on hunts with you. You can also decide to leave them behind if you want, but they are a little buddy that you can take on a hunt with you. You can also upgrade them, and the way that you get the parts to upgrade them is to gather more Tsukumo around the map. There's 50 in every single map, so that's a lot of Tsukumo. <laughs> to know if you have enough materials to upgrade, you just need to head to any of your camps that have a campfire, and you'll see a little Tsukumo icon above the campfire indicating that an upgrade is available. Once you have enough materials to upgrade your new friend, you can choose between multiple different options. You can choose to upgrade their attack form, their defense form, their support form, or their threader form. But you do not have to choose just one of these to upgrade, which I didn't know for an embarrassingly long time. I went all in on support because I was like, this little guy healing me is cool. I'll just go in on support. You don't have to just choose one. You can choose to upgrade your attack of the Tsukumo to get new attack forms. You can then get the support Tsukumo to get the support skill that they put down a little healing mist that heals you. Then you can go all in on defense so they live for longer. You can really mix and match how you want to upgrade your Tsukumo. And you can always reset the upgrades that they have. And you only have to pay some kimono orbs in order to do this, which you will have plenty of. So if you want to mix and match and figure out what you want, which kind of uh, mix and match you like, you can do that. Another Tsukumo tip is do not drive yourself crazy searching far and wide to find all of them right away. As you progress through the Katakuri upgrade tree, you will reach an upgrade fairly quickly that makes it so your hunting towers will show the location of items and Tsukumo on the map. So that's when you want to tackle finding them and not before you have absolutely no guidance at all. Some of them are hidden behind little pathways that you have to set on fire. I get, it's going to be it's going to be a pain in the ass to find 50 on every single map. <laughs> so just wait until you have that upgrade and then go find them all. Unless you like exploring, then go ahead, do your thing. Just don't I don't want any of you to drive yourself crazy looking for them when there's going to be an option not to do that later. Speaking of the Karakuri menu, make sure to check it often. It's very easy to forget to check if you have upgrades available because there won't be anything that pops up saying you have enough for an upgrade. So check it often. There's some really good upgrades in there and some very fun upgrades that you don't want to wait to gain access to. 
The way that you upgrade your Katakuri tree is through Kimono Orbs. You gain these on hunts and you get more orbs the more parts you break on a Kimono. So if you're breaking a lot of parts, you are going to gain a lot of orbs very quickly. A quick tip also about the Katakuri menu, after you've learned a fusion Katakuri, which is where you learn in-game to put combat Katakuri together to create a fusion Katakuri, <laughs> like the, the big wall or the big bonk hammer. If you forget how to do any of these at any point, which I certainly did, you can open the Katakuri menu and head to the fusion Katakuri that you have forgotten, and it will tell you right in the menu how to build it. So don't panic if you forget, you can always go back and check. Another quick Katakuri tip is that you can change a setting in the accessibility menu to toggle for when you build Katakuri instead of holding it. If so if that is something that you find to be more comfortable, you would rather just press it, build your little stuff and then press it again to turn it off instead of holding it, go ahead and do that. Save your hands. It can also be really good for people that have any hand issues. That is an option that you can change. Sticking with the Katakuri theme, I've said that word a lot, <laughs> let's talk about Dragon Pits. These are things around the map that you can find and upgrade in order to be able to build more Dragon Katakuri. These are all of the non-combat stuff, such as the zipline, the tent, the campfire, etc. Once you go to them physically, you will be able to upgrade them via the map. So you have no need to physically go to every single dragon pit every time you want to upgrade one. You will be able to see via the map also if you have enough materials to upgrade the dragon pit. If the icon is like this nude, orangey, yellow color, you can indeed upgrade. If it's red, then you don't have enough materials. And if it's gray, it's a dragon pit that you have not physically been to yet. Speaking of upgrading dragon pits, try to keep an eye on how much of the fire, wind, earth, etc. dragon katakuri you have used and how much you have available to use, especially early on. So if you're not sure how this works, the reason you upgrade dragon pits is so that you can build more stuff. And until you have upgraded a lot of dragon pits, you're going to be limited on the amount of zip lines you can put down, the, the amount of like wind machine things that you can put down. So you definitely don't want to go overboard placing things all over the place early on. This becomes way less of an issue fairly quickly, but very, very early on when you haven't been able to upgrade any of the dragon pits, you may find yourself running out of energy to use. So if you place a zip line or a hunting tower that's not in the best spot, it's probably best to just destroy it to free up that energy just in case. Again, this really is not an issue later on, but it's something that I ran into early on where I needed to use a zip line to go up a really freaking tall cliff. I did not have enough energy to do that, so I had to walk. And why would I walk when I can zip? So don't be like me. <laughs> Let's keep going with the Katakuri tips. Eventually, you will unlock the ability to build a fishing Katakuri to go out and get fish for you. I recommend you do this. You unlock this specific thing as fast as possible because it takes multiple hunts for the fishing contraption to get enough fish for you to actually collect the fish from it. And this is also one of the best foods that you can eat for hunts. It gives you a massive health boost. So the earlier that you are able to start collecting fish, the better. Another dragon katakuri that will come in very handy is the looking glass katakuri. You can build this in order to enter character creation again. So if there's anything at all that you end up not digging about your character after making them, because the character creator is very extensive. <laughs> and after a couple cutscenes, sometimes I look at my character and I'm like, hmm, I didn't do that quite right, did I? <laughs> And it happens almost every game where I think I got a good looking character. I see a couple of cutscenes and then I'm like, budge, that's not a good looking character. Well, you can just build the looking glass Katakuri and you can change the way that you look. So that is fantastic. More Katakuri tips. You can actually use a Katakuri that throws things at 
the kimono. Now this is a dragon katakuri. You place it down. So what I tend to do is I place it in areas that I know the kimono tend to go to because you know, just like Monster Hunter, they have like the spots that they'll generally go to or they have like their home that they go to. So basically I'll place a building in their house so I can throw things at them in it. <laughs> you can use this to throw torches at the kimono so you can just keep putting torches in this little contraption and it will throw it at them eventually setting them on fire you can also throw yourself if you want you can just jump on top and it will launch you right at them so that's the thing that you can do it's very fun and it will set them on fire and it is supposed to generally set them on fire faster than just having fire applied to your weapon and hitting them. Fun bonus fact, but you can actually throw torches at Kimono using the Maul weapon. So do with that information what you will. <laughs> Springboard Katakuri are just great to use with most weapons. They allow you to close the distance and the attacks for pretty much all the weapons after a spring are all really good. But you can also use these to travel distances faster. Simply build a springboard and then after you spring forward, build another one and keep going until you run out of materials. This cuts down some of your travel time quite a bit and this katakuri exists in the world unless it gets destroyed. So if you manage to build little springboard <laughs> roads, you're going to be able to have a bunch of them all over the place and be able to travel very, very quickly. So that's a thing that I started doing really early on because it made me so much faster. The helicopter katakuri is another tip I want to give about where you can actually chain these to gain more height and keep flying. So if you feel like you can't quite make the flight to land where you want to land or you just want to travel further in the air, you can let go of your current little helicopter and then you can summon another one in the air. Doing this will grant you a boost to your height after you summon it, allowing you to go further. I think this is the main way that I travel now. I jump off a big cliff and then I just keep chaining them for as long as I can to fly wherever I want to go. It's great. The stake katakuri is best used to climb cliff sides and also to climb the side of a kimono if you need to. But apparently, now I've been told, but I haven't been able to pull this off yet. So I don't know if it's true, but I've been told, <laughs> so it should be true, that if you directly hit a kimono's weak spot with the stake katakuri, it will automatically grant you hunter's arm which I'll explain what Hunter's Arm is in a second, but that sounds really cool. So I'm just gonna keep trying to do that. And if I can't do it, I'm gonna just say I was lied to. <laughs> but if you manage to pull it off, let me know and send me a video. I'd like to see it, thank you. Hunter's Arm. That's a thing I didn't totally understand for a little while. <laughs> so to use the Hunter's Arm, you have to climb on top of a kimono's weak spot. These are the glowing blue green spots on them. And the Hunter's Arm does a few things. The most obvious is after you use the hunter's arm, your katakuri thread will be overfilled, allowing you to build more things for a short period of time. This is a great time to spam the bomb, the hammer, any fusion katakuri that uses a lot of your thread and does a lot of damage to the kimono. This is a great time to spam it because you have so many resources. In addition to overthrowing your thread, Hunter's Arm can also grant you more healing water to heal yourself with. So if you're running low during combat, you don't have to worry about running around trying to find some more healing water. You can just grab some from the kimono. It's really good. I really like this feature. This feature is very, very, very nice because in some of the tough fights, it genuinely, I run out of healing water. I have to go run and find more things to heal myself with. But you don't have to do that. You can just jump on top of the monster and pull healing water out of them. It's, it's great. I love that it also does that. The Hunter's Arm also has an interaction with talismans, which I'll explain more about those in a minute. But using the Hunter's Arm during a hunt makes it more likely to gain a talisman at the end of a hunt. So it's well worth using the hunter's arm. I think it's very easy to be like, well, I don't need to build a bunch of fusion katagudi, so I don't need to use the hunter's arm. It is just a good idea to do it in general. Just, just do it. Do it all the time. <laughs> Speaking of talismans, you can equip more than one. Now this might sound really, really stupid. And maybe it's because I am stupid, but I initially didn't know that I could equip more than one talisman because in the UI, when you're looking at your character, there's only space for one. But when you click the talisman part of the UI, it opens up and shows that you can equip 
five of them. This is how you're going to really define your stats. It's how you're going to further your build and deepen your build. Random tip that's not really related to anything, so I'm just putting it here towards the end, but there is a bathhouse in the town of Minato that you can develop new baths that will permanently increase your health. There will be a point in the story where they walk you through this, but you have access to the bathhouse right away and the option of increasing your health this way. So if you find yourself struggling at all before the story explains this part of you, you can go ahead and do it right away and get some more health and that should help you. And my final tip is a big one. All of the eight weapons in Wild Hearts are not unlocked from the beginning of the game. I know. Oh, oh I know. I know. <laughs> Trust me, you unlock the claw blades, the katakuri staff, and the cannon during the main story campaign in chapter two, which I'm not going to spoil any of that. I'm not going to show you the fight. I'm not going to do any of that, but I will tell you that it's not that far into the main story. So if you are 100% focused on one of those three weapons, then I would recommend you just beeline the main campaign until you get to that part. Definitely pick up all of the side quests on your way through the main story, but come back to those side quests after you've unlocked the weapon that you want to main and stick with. But I promise you it's not that far in. I've had to beeline a few times to unlock these weapons to give feedback on them, and it really doesn't take very long. I will be doing another beeline of the story campaign as soon as possible, and I will insert it into the video right here on the screen somewhere <laughs> to tell you how long it took me. But I promise that it's really not that long. So there you have it. At least that's what I think. I think, <laughs> I think I gave you all the information. Knowing my luck as soon as I finish this video or as soon as you guys have it and you're looking at it, there's gonna be something else that I wanna include. But I think that's everything. Hopefully you find these tips useful when you start your own journey in Azuma. Thank you so much for watching. Come stop by our stream to see lots of Wild Hearts action. Feel free to ask me any questions because I have an ungodly amount of hours in this game already. I have a problem. <laughs> I'm addicted. And stay tuned here for more videos. Thank you. Bye.